Congratulations, you've done all your med school exams and now you're about to start your first job as a doctor in the NHS. You've done all your DOPS, your supervisor meetings, all those reflections, never to see them again, right? Wrong. So during your foundation years of training, you actually need to keep a portfolio of everything you do and you need to pass something called the ARCP, the Annual Competence Performance Review. That's not ARCP, is it? It's the Annual Review of Competence Progression. There you go, that's the one. In this video, I'm gonna give you guys a quick whistle-stop tour of the platform that you're expected to use and what kind of things you can expect so you're not thrown off guard when you start later on. The platform is called Horus. Now, don't ask me why it's called Horus. It could have been anything, but it, they decided to name it after the Egyptian god. I'm sure they got some kind of reasoning. Um, but anyways, so let's go on to portfolio and curriculum. That's where we'll start. Essentially, what you have to show in this portfolio is that you've met these criteria that's been set out by the GMC. So they've broadly categorized this into three higher learning objectives. The first one is an accountable, capable and compassionate doctor. So we can see that over here. The second one is a valuable member of the workforce. That's over here. And the third one is a professional uh, responsible for their own practice and portfolio development, which is what we have over here. So you've got these three broad categories. And then within each of these categories, you have nine subcategories. Well, nine overall, it's not nine within each one. So overall, there's nine subcategories and they're called Foundation Professional Capabilities, FPCs. And so they're things like, you know, clinical assessment, being able to assess the patient needs in a variety of clinical settings. There's stuff like communication, continuity of care. So overall, you've got these nine FPCs. And essentially, you've got to find evidence and link it into each one of these FPCs. Now, you don't have to link like one evidence to one FPC. You can link one evidence to maybe two FPCs or three. And essentially, you want to have maybe three or four evidence for each of these FPCs. So it looks like a lot, but it's not as much um, when you think about it. So now you're thinking, well, what kind of evidence can I have? So there's different types of evidence. And to see it, let's go on to form start new. So here we can see that at the beginning of each placement, you need to do these meetings, which we'll get into. But if you look over here throughout each placement, we have these SLEs. I think it means something like specific learning encounter or, or something like that. I might be wrong. <laughs> Regardless, you've got six of these that you need to do. So you've got stuff like uh, mini kexes and CBDs. So you guys are probably familiar with that. Essentially, you discuss a case with a senior, um, just work your way through and reflect on the case. Uh, maybe something interesting you found. You've also got your standard DOPS. So those would be your procedures like um, doing catheters, cannulas, taking bloods, ABGs, all that kind of stuff. Then you've got these learn encounters. So these are like reflection notes. Uh, and again, you have to get these signed off as well by a senior. You've got developing the clinical teacher. So that's when you've done like a presentation. Maybe you've done journal club. Maybe you've done some teaching. Um, that's where this would all come up. And then you've got the final one, which is clinical leadership work based review. I'm not too sure what this is, but essentially it's got a few categories about leadership qualities you've demonstrated. Um, it's a bit complex. Now, as I said, you don't have to do all of these. You just have to do a few of them and then link them to each of those FPs. Next up is the other mandatory stuff that you have to do throughout the whole year. So let's start with your clinical and educational supervisors. So each person will get three clinical supervisors. So one for each rotation. If you have more rotations, you obviously have more and less, less. You, you get the idea. I think you're smart enough for that. Um, so you have to report to these supervisors for each rotation. So they're in charge of each rotation. But then you also have one educational supervisor who's in charge of your learning throughout the entire year. You only get one of those. So if you're not happy with your clinical supervisor, you can go to your educational. And if you're not happy with your educational, I mean, it sucks to be you. <laughs> With each of these supervisors, you also have to do regular meetings. You do one at the start of the placement, one at the end of the placement for each clinical supervisor and the educational supervisor. Then you also have like a mid-year review. For each placement, you also need to do a personal development plan. So I've got two here because I've done two rotations. Let's go on my first one. 
So in this one, I had three objectives. Number one was to practice psychiatric history taking. Number two was formulating a referral letter. So just learning how to write stuff concisely. And number three is how to be able to summarize when I'm talking to clinicians over the phone, like how I'm referring, how I wanna get across the important details. And I've also talked about you know, how will they be addressed and how I can evaluate whether it's been achieved. It's, it's more just tick box stuff. It's not like, you know, it's not, it's not that deep. Next up is the PSA, the prescribing safety exam. Most of you guys would have done this during med school at the end. If you haven't, then make sure you pass it during F1. Once you've done that, you have to upload the certificate. Pretty simple to do. Then you have the team assessment of behavior, the tab form. You have to do one of these throughout the entire year. It's better to get it done out of the way. That's what I did. So if you click on it, the aim is to basically get a review of yourself from other team members. So this shouldn't just be doctors. You have like a set criteria. For me, you can see you need two consultants or trained GPs. You need one other doctor that's more senior than an F2. You need two senior nurses and also two allied health professionals. And overall, you need 10 people so you can have more. I asked 19, 12 responded. That was good enough. We can actually have a look. Good communication skills, always happy to ask if they need advice. Good explaining in layman's terms. That's what I do on my TikTok. Relaxed, clear communications, team report is good, engages well, staff are pleased. So no concerns there. That's good, very approachable. Whole round, amazing personal, both professional. It means a lot, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Next up is the placement supervision group. This is basically pretty similar to the tab. Another thing you have to do is keep a personal learning log. So you have to do a certain amount of hours of teaching throughout your whole year. The criteria is to get 60 hours of teaching done with 30 of those hours being core teaching. Core teaching is basically any teaching that's provided by the trust meant for F1s. And non-core is basically anything else. So whether that's you know any courses you did, any e-learning, any departmental teaching, literally anything. You could watch a YouTube video that you did for work and you could log that. If you did a course, log that. Um, it's not too hard to hit, it's the core hours that can be. So you can see here for me, I've got 23.5 core hours and non-core is 33 so far. But even if you get 60 and you don't get core being 30, then you don't meet the requirements. So that's the important part. And here we can see what I've done. So this was core teaching. I had a foundation doctor's board meeting for two hours. I logged that here. I had a lumbar puncture workshop. That was non-core. You also have to attend three mandatory courses throughout the whole year, and they are acute care simulation, end of life care, and the F1 careers training day. Now, I think you also have to do an ILS course as well, but I'm not sure if that's mandatory. Either way, get all those stuff done and log it because you will need to do that. And no, we're not done. There's one more thing, one more thing that's essential, and that is the QIP. So throughout the year, you also have to get involved in a quality improvement project and log that. But there's a cheeky workaround. So at the end of the year, the GMC sends you a little survey. And if you do that survey, that technically counts as a QIP. So not many people know that, but your boy, he's got your back. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You're not failing the ARCP on my watch. Now, if you scroll to the bottom, you also have some additional achievements. And then things like doing any other exams, doing procedures, publications, research, taster sessions, teaching others, all that stuff is not essential, but if you've done it, you can log it and then also link it to your HLOs. I also want to reiterate that this was a quick tour of the platform and what to expect. Now, there may be a lot of things that I missed. I hope I haven't, but there, there, there probably will be some things. So you need to make sure you do your own research and things might change and the requirements might also change next year when you start. So make sure you check what you need to do for your own trust. Now you're all ready to pass your ARCP and start your specialty training. But what's it like being an F1 doctor? You don't know that yet, but don't worry. As I said, I got you back. Check out this video, which was my first ever day as a doctor in the NHS. And when you've done that, check out this video, which was a night shift, New Year's Eve night shift, where I was in charge of 208 patients and a lot happened. We're talking cardiac arrests, people sliced their neck, like a lot happened. Just, just watch both of these videos.